Amen? So the meditative mind and realigning, then moving with purpose. We must realign ourselves like that car, when that car needs that realignment. Amen? Because many times when your car is out of line and you take your hands off the wheel, right? Then you got to be in a ditch, right? But you got a little bit more time if you're in alignment and you take your hands off the wheel, right? You can go a little bit further. And God wants you to direct, direct your life in that way. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank and honor God this day. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Amen. We just heard the song from the caravans, Mary, Don't You Weep. You know, sometimes we have to go back because I was listening to Donnie McClurkin in a recent interview. He said that the gospel industry, the gospel music is not doing too well. They're getting too worldly. So every once in a while you have to reach back to what that, what you knew that worked. Yes. And we've got to keep Christ at the center. Yes. We need to keep Christ at the center of all our activities. Now, this may sound like a little much, but when you need him, he'll be there. Amen? So we just thank God for you today for coming out to worship with us. And we have a wonderful uh, sermon on today. Uh, the title of our sermon is Meditative Mind, Realigning, Then Moving with Purpose. We're going to talk about meditation. It's important to um Keep your mind on Jesus. Yes. You know, uh, the mind is very important. The mind is uh, a part of our soulless realm. Mm. And in our mind is where we make decisions. In our mind also where the seat of emotions are. Yes. Yes. So we have to regulate our mind to be focused on Christ so that we don't go off the handle. Now, our mind is so important, the meditative mind realigning and moving with purpose. We must realign if we're out of line. Mm -hmm. Because many times we move without lining up with Christ. Right. Now, many times when you had a car before and it was out of alignment and you would just take your hands off the wheel for a moment, the car would either veer to the left or to the right. And that means that that car needs an alignment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how our lives are many times. We need to get an alignment. Mm -hmm. And many of us have been driving around for years out of alignment and struggling when we need to line up with Christ. All right. All right. We need to go to the shop. We need to go to God, get on the altar, and ask God for help. Yes. We need to be a realigned with the Spirit of God. Amen. Our scripture is becoming from Hebrews 4 and 15 and Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. Could you please uh, read those for us, uh, First Lady Boswell? Okay, Hebrews 4 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. 8 and 5 says, Whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Amen. And keep the commandment, you shall feel no evil thing. Mm -hmm. right. And we know that Jesus in the New Testament is recorded that he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes. So God knows what it's like when you're going through and when you're suffering. Amen. Many times we have people who try to counsel us or give us advice and they have not a clue of what we can, uh, what we're going through. Amen. So we have a God who can counsel us based on what he's been through. Amen. And it says that whoever keeps the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, we're dealing with the mind and emotions and meditation. 
And we know that salvation is not contingent on the way you feel. All right. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Right. Now you may be feeling up one day, and you may be feeling down one day. Mm. Amen? But God's relationship with you is constant. Mm. It stays the same. Mm. Now we can't do the salvation walk based on our feelings. Amen. And we said that the mind is the seat of the emotions where we feel it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a place where we must guard. We must have a guard on our mind, on our ear gate, what comes in our ears, on our eye gate, what we watch, what we taste. We need a guard on all those things. Oh, yes. Because Satan seeks to, to, to set up in your mind and in your emotions a throne. Yes. Now, Satan is a, is a god of this world. He's a prince of the power of the air. He wants to have a dominion over you. And he tr tries to enter in through emotions. So we need to guard our emotions. Now, we, not, we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched, so God knows how you feel. Now, we need to develop the mind of Christ. Now, um, and you have the mind of Christ, you have a mind, and you have a brain, right? So your brain and your mind are two different things. Your brain is the physical part of you. Now, many people have uh, brain injury, and it affects the mind. So we need to pray and, and try to get God to regulate that. If that's your case, God can regulate you and heal your brain. Many people have brain diseases. Many people have ailments that 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 are uh, hurting. That, that their brain is affected. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, "Let this mind be in you." Yes. Amen. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So your mind is your spiritual aspect. All right. And your brain is your physical aspect. Mm -hmm. Some people may develop Alzheimer's or they used to call it being senile, or these other things. But these things are your brain. They're not your mind. Your brain can affect your mind. So we need to be do brain healthy activities. We have a nurse in the house, amen? So she knows about uh, the foods you need to eat and the things that you need to do and that proper exercise, amen? So these things can help you offset those things later in life. Amen? Amen? So we need to take care of ourselves today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the brain is important if we want to develop the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we want to ward off Satan who seeks to see, set up a seat in our mind. Mm -hmm. So develop, developing the mind of Christ, you need to develop your faith. In order to develop your spiritual mind, your spirit, the spirit mind is to develop your faith. Right. And faith comes by Hear it. Yes. Amen? Amen. It is not based on what you see or how you feel. All right. Amen? Yes. That's the difference from being an immature person and a mature person. Mm -hmm. Amen? It doesn't matter what you feel like. You have to get up and go to work. Right. Now, people, if you're immature, you might say, oh, I don't feel like going to work today. Now, you're not, you're not sick. You're not, you can still get up. Amen? Amen. But you say, I feel. <laughs> yeah. But you got bills due on your next paycheck. Yes, yes. Amen? So you wouldn't want to be mature and say, okay, it's not based on a feeling. Amen? Hmm. You decide to lay in bed and um, next thing you know, Andy Griffin and whatever comes <laughs> on, and then you're feeling great. Hmm. Amen? Amen? And then time comes when you're supposed to get off of work. And you missed the whole day's pay, and it seemed like it went by in, in 20 minutes. Yeah. So you should have went to work. Amen? Amen? Amen. Then your check is less. But I'm going to get off that. <laughs> Develop the mind of Christ. Right. Amen? Amen? Now, um, any of, uh, we, we know a, a, a pop musician, uh, Prince. Remember Prince, right? Amen. Prince was an a, a African-American musician, very famous. Amen? And one of his songs said, do not let the elevator take you down. <laughs> Amen. And I, I, I always wonder what that meant, right? Don't let the elevator take you down. So elevator is another term for the devil. Amen. 
because the devil, I, I was doing some research, they say they call the elevator the devil because he gets you where you want to be fast. Because when Jesus was on a mountain, the devil, told, devil came to Jesus and said, I will give you all these lands. I will give, make you kick powerful. I, just bow down to me. Amen? So if you bow down to Satan, he may in turn give you power. And that's the elevator. That's the fast way. Amen? So we need to take things the slow way sometimes. We need to take things organically many times. Because that's the best way to do it. Right. To develop your mind. To have Christ in your life. Instead of taking the fast way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's said that if you take the shortcut. You get cut short. Mm -hmm. Anything that's worth anything of value may take longer than what the shortcut gives you. Yes. Amen. And this is what the devil tries to do. He tries to appease your flesh. Tries to get you to uh, satiate you with your uh, physical uh, senses and try to make you take the elevator. Mm -hmm. Amen. But many times we got to take the step. Mm -hmm. You know anybody who went from second grade to twelfth grade mm -hmm. or to from um, high school, well, from kindergarten to college? No, there are steps in between. Amen? There are many courses in course college you must take prerequisites. Amen? So there is no elevator if you want to perform many times for uh, proper, proper success. Now, there are exceptions, of course. That's not all the case because you can read once in a while that a 14-year-old graduated from college. Yes. But that's like one in two million. Mm -hmm. But there are cases. Yes. But we want to develop the mind of Christ to develop our faith and, and focus on not what we see, but on what God said. All right. Now, the scripture in Philippians 2 and 4 through 6 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, yes. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Mm -hmm. So let this mind be in you, the mind of Christ. Yes. Amen? Yes. And the, the elevation ministry does not involve a singular effort or one individual. We need, we need to uh, be, um, combine our efforts in a group to move forward because many times we try to do things by ourselves and sometimes we try to take shortcuts like was an example before that we gave about taking the elevator you take the elevator then you say I don't need nobody else I take an elevator I might make a deal I might go do something that that's going against what I was brought up in or doing something that's unrighteous to make a shortcut that's the elevator. That's the elevator. Hmm. But the prince of the power of the air is already defeated. Yes. Stand on the side of Jesus. Hmm. Be on Jesus' side. Be on God's side, and you won't regret it. All right. So we want to involve the efforts of others in our lives because we're not islands to ourselves. We're not closed off from the world. Hmm. We're not in a monastery just closed off doing our own thing because. We need to be involved with others. Yeah. We need to connect with others. Yes. As I was speaking to my wife earlier, everything in your life has a meaning. Yes. And any everything you go through is has a has a meaning if you're spiritual. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're spiritual, you can walk through the supermarket and, and just see things differently. Mm -hmm. A little kid may pass you on the street, what he says to you has a meaning. And we need to interpret, it, interpret these things because sometimes God is trying to realign us, trying to get us on the right path. Right. Because once you're not in alignment with God, you have it out of order. You have flesh, you have uh, flesh, then you have your, um, your spirit. We should have your spirit and then your flesh. Your spirit should be in charge of your body and your soul. Amen. But many people have their body above everything else. Mm -hmm. Many people have their soul or their intellect above everything else. Some people are ruled by their emotions. 
But we need to be ruled by the spirit, the spirit of God, the mind of Christ. Yes. In that order, we're in alignment. Mm -hmm. If we have our body um, leading us, then we're out of alignment. If we have our soul, our intellect leading, leading us, then we're out of alignment. We must have our spirit lined up so that we can go forward in a straight path. Yes. So, um, in Genesis 11 and 6, it says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language, and, this, and they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, you can be out of alignment but with the group of people, but you're doing the wrong thing. Mm, yeah. You could be with a group of people doing the wrong thing. So it's not the main thing being with a group of people. You have to be lined up first and then with a group of people doing the right thing. All right. Because when they built a tower of Babel, they went against God. God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. But God said spread out horizontally. Amen. After the people got off of Noah's Ark and started to populate. But no, they they said they got together and tried to build a tower and go vertically. Yeah. So God said horizontal and they went vertically. So they were a group of people doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to reassess the group of people we're with because we might be spending years um, under bad leadership. Amen. That's why we need a personal relationship with God so he can tell us that if a person is, if, if we're going the right way. Now, if someone comes to you and say, God said this, God said that, that's okay. But if they say that to you, God has said that to you first. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is a person comes along, a prophet comes along and confirms what God has already spoken to you. Yeah. Now, if someone told, tells you something that God has not spoken to you, you need to get in the place, one, to hear from God. Hmm. Now, if you're not in a place to hear from God and a person can tell you something what God says, you can be led astray. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to be led by the Spirit, to yes. be in alignment. Amen? Yes. So the meditative mind and realigning, then moving with purpose. We must realign ourselves like that car, when that car needs that realignment, amen? There's many times when your car is out of line and you take your hands off the wheel, right? Mm -hmm. Then you gotta be in a ditch, right? Mm -hmm. But you got a little bit more time if you're in alignment and you take your hands off the wheel, right? You can go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to direct, direct your life in that way. All right. But if you're not lined up with God, yeah. amen, when you pray for something, just take your hand off of it mm -hmm. and let God God, let God lock because you put your hand on it that means you out of line right. amen so when you pray for something let God guide you amen take your hand off the wheel and God will guide you in that direction where you say need that. to go say that. behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity yes. it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Mm -hmm. This is the 133rd division of Psalm. Talks about unity. Yeah. Talks about when brothers are unified, when people are unified in alignment, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But if you're unified, you can be unified out of alignment. Mm -hmm. I was in 1996. I was working at a concrete yard in a yard with, in a brick factory. And everybody was going to, to the Million Man Conference, Million Man March. Mm -hmm. And it was my choice to not go. I consulted with God. God gave me the scripture Kohath. Now, Kohath went against Aaron and Moses. And when they went against Aaron and Moses, the earth opened up and they fell into a ditch. 
So God said, the leadership of that is not aligning with my spirit. Even though it's a good thing, we need to be unified as, uh, as people. We need to be together. But the leadership has to be going the right way. If the scripture says that if you do not call Jesus God, then that's the spirit of Antichrist. What you're saying, I'm understanding the words that's coming out of your mouth. To you, Jesus is not God. So I cannot line up with what you're doing. Even though it was popular, at that time we need to have our own mind yes. and we need to develop the mind of Christ mm -hmm. and if Christ's mind is developed into us you're hard to trick mm -hmm. you're hard to deceive mm -hmm. you're hard to fool so you need the mind of Christ yes. we need to realign and move with purpose mm -hmm. but we must realign first it's sequential it is a prerequisite to realign, then move. Amen? Right. So, like you go on a job, you get training, right? Yeah. And you're with a person who's worked at the job, right? They don't set you at the job and expect you to do everything that, that another person who's been there for five years. You're first set with a trainer. And that is your realignment. And then when they're ready for you to move on, then they let you go. And, and then you make your own mistakes. Then it's on you. But then just moving, that's realigning first and then moving with purpose. All right. So uh, I'm almost done. And we're talking about realigning with purpose. But we need to focus on the emotional part. Because many times we're led by our emotions. The emotions are led in, our emotions has a seat, like we said before, that's in the soulish realm. Now, the soulish realm consists of the mind, will, and emotions. And what happens is you have, you're composed of spirit, soul, and body. Everyone has a, everyone is a spirit. They have, they possess a soul, and they live in a body. But even in that paradigm with the soul is composed of three things the mind will and emotion so what happens is in that emotion tries to lead you sometimes a will that's not God's will but your will tries to lead you and sometimes your intellect tries to lead you but those things should never lead you they should fall under the spirit well. your spirit is your essence hmm. your spirit is a part of you that cannot die your spirit is a part of you that gets up when your body is ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Your spirit is a part that's the important part, is the eternal part. So that's the part we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. So why are we focusing on our body that's going to be laying in the dirt one day? Uh -huh. Why is we focusing on our mind that when, when our mind is going to be, it says when you die, there's no more memory. So many people say they're going to be with their loved ones in heaven and this and that. That's not scriptural. When you, when you die, you have no more thoughts. You have no more memory. We need to say, stay in the word of God. We say some nice things when people die. I'm going to see them again. But the thing, the Bible says that you're going to be with God. It don't say you're going to be married in heaven. Amen. We need to stay in the book. Amen. And many times if we don't know, we try to console somebody. How are you going to console somebody with a lie? Mm. Most of the time we do it for ourselves. Mm. But it's better to remain silent than be a fool. Mm. Amen? Because mm. you can't console nobody truly with a lie. Right, yeah. Not truly. Not in from the deepest core of the human body. Mm. I mean the human experience. Mm. Amen? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. The soulless realm is a realm of entry, of great pleasure and great pain. It is like the international man of mystery. It's stuck sometimes in the past. Amen. The soul interacts with so many things, so many people. Amen. You can just walk through a place, a mall, and you're interacting with souls. Amen. You feel in things, all kinds. The soul is so important. We need to guard our soul, man. Amen. And the way we guard our soul, man, is in the word of God. By developing our spiritual man, by developing our mind of Christ. By reading the word of God. Amen? So, if, if your soul remembers when you stretched. 
Amen. So when you stretch, as many times you need some type of leadership to stretch. Amen. I remember when I went from high school to college. In high school, I studied maybe an hour a week, two hours a week. But when I went to college, you must stretch. You must study more. You must read more. Many times we got to do more in order to stretch. And if you can do that with your own ambition, with your own uh, motivation, that's where you want to be. You want don't want to have people telling you to do this, do that, do that. You want to, I'm working on that myself. Amen. Because we have a tendency to get lazy. We have a tendency to, to lay back and lay down and not do what God, not be where God wants us to be. And then you see how people excel to such heights without using the elevator. Many people, I don't want to start naming names, but you can think of real famous people, and you don't know many of them could have used the elevator. Amen? But I don't know who have, and I don't know who saved, I don't know who made a deal with the devil. I don't know, I don't, so I'm not going to say that. It's none of my business. But we need to stretch, amen, without the use of Satan. Without, because Satan will come to you. If he came to Jesus and promised Jesus things, he will do it to you. He will say, if you make a deal with me, I will give you this. And many people sell out for less. You ever see those help one, oh, the wanted posters? Billy the Kid, 5000 John Dillinger, 10000 What's on? What's The devil got a wanted poster for each and one of us. But some of us got a dollar down there. Oh, he'll sell out for a dollar. But some of us won't sell out at all. Yeah. But some people will sell out, if you offer them a big enough check, $100,000, they'll sell out. they sell their soul. Mm -hmm. Amen? So we want to be the people that say, no amount of money can make me turn my life, uh, uh, take, turn, my, turn, turn on Christ. Mm -hmm. No amount of money. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's where they get that soap, that's where they get the, the martyr's crown from. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The martyr's crown is when you die in the name of Christ. All right. When they say, I'm going to chop off your head if you denounce Christ. Mm. Then they say, well, go ahead and chop it off then. Because mm. I want to make it to heaven. Yes. Amen? Mm. So feelings are such a vital part of the emotional experience. We want to not have our feelings uh, captivate us, but we want to hold our feelings captive. Mm. We want to make our feelings captive. We want to make our body be in check. Amen. And I'm working on that too. Amen. We all working on it. Amen? Amen. The mind is Christ. The mind of Christ is spiritual, not the brain of Christ. Amen. So let the spiritual override the natural. We thank God for you today. Amen. 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 We thank God for developing the mind of Christ is to develop your faith not in what you see, but what God says. Amen. It involves the efforts of others. Yes. We are not islands to ourselves. This is not a monastery. This is not a place where we can just lock in and just bury our head in the sand, but our whole body sticking out. Okay. You know, we want to interact with others. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the salvation that you have, that you confess, is not contingent upon the way you feel. Yet feelings are such a vital part of the emotional experience. Salvation is not contingent upon these feelings, but it's a vital part that we must captivate or keep in check. Yes. Amen. So we want to be different from the world. And this way, we are an observable difference. Mm -hmm. We should be observably different. Mm -hmm. When we go to the party, and they drinking and got the boom bap on, the music. But why would the pastor be in the center of the floor <laughs> doing the Watusi? He out doing everybody else. And then he come up and preaching. It just don't look right. I'm not saying it's wrong. But it don't look right because... Your goal is to develop people to Christ-like maturity. And if they have an image of the pastor why too soon and doing the limbo, it might not um, 
cons it might not go into that that paradigm, and they you want to effectively have people uh, get into the kingdom of God. So I thank God for you today, Amen. Amen. So we ask God to bless you and um, keep you, yes. Amen. Yes. And I hope the words that uh, were spoken today um, somehow enter into your spirit to um, assist you along the narrow walk. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.